thing gets trapped in my face. I have no idea. Procrastination is bad. That's why I am going to do 10 tips on the things that you need to know in order to start playing guitar as smoothly as possible. Or things that I thought that I probably should have known before I started playing guitar. Tip number one. Yeah, I'm going to put it there. The first tip is start, like actually start. Set small goals, like baby goals for you to achieve and stop looking at what gear can I get? Stop talking to people about how you really want to start playing guitar and you used to be able to play, but you haven't played that much in a long time. So you've kind of like forgotten it all. No. Practice, start, actually, actually begin. Stop talking about it as if it's going to be something. Get on with it. Follow these tips. There you go. That's what you need to do. Second tip. This is a pretty obvious one, but it is the first thing you need to do, and that's find a guitar. This guy. Acoustic or electric, it doesn't really matter. They're both interchangeable at this point. For what you're going to be learning on, it doesn't matter. People turn around, they're like, oh yeah, you should start playing on acoustic because it's good, it builds up finger strength. Normally they're like a heavier string gauge, so it's harder, harder to play on your fingers. And that's kind of been more of a traditional route. But then other people turn around and they say, play on the instrument that you actually want to play. So if you want to play electric guitar, start on electric. If you want to play on acoustic, start on acoustic. I'm saying, ignore all of them. Just pick one, it honestly doesn't matter. If you're gonna pick electric, look up Fender Squire. Squire as in like medieval Squire. They are good value for money. There's a lot of them to choose from and they're not too expensive as well. There's no point starting out and sinking six, seven hundred pounds into like a Mexican made um, Fender Strat or spending over a grand on a PRS um, because you just know this is gonna be your dream. Great, if it is, then, then stick it out. But I would definitely say start out with like a Fender Squire or a Yamaha Pacifica are really good value for money. In the past, they've been spoken about as really good guitars to start learning on. And a lot of these guitars, like Fender Squires as well, some artists, like huge artists, take Squires out on stage and they'll use them over using a USA Fender. They're still good guitars. But yeah, first of all, find your guitar, that's the main thing. Electric or acoustic, you don't have to buy it. You could even just borrow one um, from someone. But as long as they're not gonna be asking for that back and it's gonna become a problem, you need to make sure you've got your guitar, whether you borrowed it or bought it from someone, and it needs to be playable. When you do buy your guitar, you are gonna have the choice of left-handed or right-handed, which won't matter if you're right-handed because you're never gonna look at left-handed. But if you are left-handed, like me, um, consider going against what feels right. I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate for this. Try picking up a right-handed guitar. Maybe before you buy one, if you borrow one, perfect, because you haven't lost any money at this point. But try to learn right-handed. It will feel weird at first, but after a week, after a few days of practicing, it would feel weirder to pick it up the other way around, left-handed. And I got nothing against lefties. I was a lefty that forced myself to learn to play right-handed. But the problem is you lock yourself out of 80-90% of guitar sales. You make things interesting when you're trying to watch another guitarist in a video and work out what he's doing from looking at his fingers alone. And also, if I'm sitting here with a lefty and I am playing guitar and then I'm like, oh cool, so I've just got this set up, um, I've done some work on it, I'm really happy with it, you have a go. They're gonna pick it up and be like, well, like, the strings are all in the wrong order. But um, yeah, if you can, try playing right-handed this way around, yeah, with your right hand being the picking hand, your left hand being the fretting hand. If that works, then the rest of your time playing guitar is gonna be a lot easier. If you just have to do lefty, then you're gonna be absolutely fine. You're just gonna have some trouble buying guitars um, in the future, but they are there. They are there. You just um, might have to shop around a little bit more than someone who's a right-handed player. So point number three, is setup or string change. So you bought your guitar, you stopped procrastinating, and you're about to start. You could go into Gap in Brighton, you could go into Anderton's in Guildford, you could go into Norman's Red Guitars. You go anywhere you want, but a lot of the time those guitars have been played, they've been tried, and they're not as in as great a condition as you might like. Nothing wrong with them, but often you need to get them set up. And even if they've been taken really good care of, 
a lot of the time the change in air temperature and the amount of time that the wood has had tension can lead to you needing to make modifications giving it essentially when you get a new car you might take it for a service just to make sure it's all running properly and it's the same thing what you want to do is go to either your local guitar shop or you might know like a luthier which is just a fancy name for someone who works on guitars or a guitar tech and you can just look on even Instagram or Google just find someone who's like local to you nearby they will normally charge 40 to 60 pounds for just a basic setup and that number might be a bit off but it's a rough idea that should do just about what you need for making sure that the neck is sitting nice and straight rather than being really bent inwards. Another really important thing it will do is the action, which is the amount of distance between the string and the frets. And if that's really high, pushing down on it is really, really painful on your fingers. If it's sitting nice and low and the neck's really flat, then you're probably in a good place. And it also just makes sure that everything is working smoothly on the guitar. But yeah, I would definitely recommend get a setup or at the very least pay someone to change the strings because that will get you in a good place to start learning without having the added difficulties of your guitars really difficult to play. And no man on earth should ever try that. Or woman. Point number four. Um, this is important. Buy a tuner. And if you don't want to buy a tuner, that's cool. Download a tuner. You've got your guitar now, you've got it set up, you're good to go. But yeah, if it's not tuned, then you're just going to be making horrible noises. So if you want to buy a tuner, um, go on Amazon, look up Snark Tuners. So that's S-N-A-R-K. I'll put a link in the description or I'll put something up here. They're relatively cheap. I think they're like seven to 12 pounds. They do a good job. They haven't stopped working on me, apart from when you like snap them because you get them at the wrong angle, but don't do that. And I think Diodario do clip-on tuners as well, and you can find other brands that do like similar stuff. But Snark is just one that I've used in the past, they're really good, don't worry about too much which one you buy, they'll all do the same job. They just clip onto the headstock up here, and then you just turn them on, and as soon as you pluck a string, it will come up with E, A, D, G, whatever, whatever your... Um, whatever string you're plucking. If you don't want to buy, that's absolutely fine. Have a look on the App Store if you've got iPhone or Play Store. If you've got Android, download either River Tuner, I think it is. It's got like a green plectrum in a black box. That's really good to use. And the other one is Fender Guitar Tuner. They're both free, but they're just reliable tuners that I've used in the past. So if you don't want to buy one, you don't need to. You can use your phone. I personally prefer the clip-on snark tuners. I think they're more responsive, they're quicker, they're more accurate. You don't have to faff around unlocking your phone, finding the app. You literally just clip it on, strum, and you're good to go. It doesn't matter which one you do, just make sure you have a tuner. That is the first thing. Little tip there as well with the tuner. It is better to tune up to a string than to tune down from one. So if you go too far and you tune backwards, and it will come out of tune a little bit more easily. It's good to go below the note you want and tune up to it and then stop. Tip number five is learn the guitar strings. This one, not everyone does when they start. A lot of people just wanna get the guitar and just get into it straight away and I totally get that. But good practice is to have a little bit of discipline and just take two seconds to teach yourself the guitar strings. So there's six strings on the guitar and that is E, A, D, G, B, E. Eddie ate dynamite good by Eddie. There are other ones, there's a surprising amount about elephants. Whatever one works well for you, just make sure that you've got one and you use that and you get it in your head because when you're tuning, you then know which note you're tuning each string to. If you don't know that, you're kind of... The strings have numbers as well. So, big old chunky boy here, low E, that's your sixth string. Your high E is your first string, kind of like counterintuitive, it's backwards. So six is E, five is A, four is D, three is G, two is B, and one is high E. Number six is learning the names of the notes, okay? It's really simple, it takes two seconds, and it's essentially the alphabet, okay? But then, so it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then it goes back to A. Every single note has a sharp, or a flat. Sounds confusing, it's not. Let's say fifth fret here, that's A. So if we go one above, it's A sharp. If we go one below, it's A flat. So just perspective. 
One thing to remember is that there isn't a sharp between B and C, so there's no B sharp, and there's no sharp between E and F, okay? The way to remember that is big cats eat frogs. There's a lot of weird mnemonics um, that you're about to dive into a world of. So A to G, everything has a sharp, so A, A sharp, B, no sharp, because big cats, there's none between B and C. So we go from B straight to C, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, E doesn't have an E sharp because E frogs, big cats eat frogs. So then we go straight to F and then F sharp and G and then it sets back to A. You don't need to necessarily know all of your frets. However, just having that base knowledge in your head is good to start out. If you can push yourself to learn the name of the notes on the low E string, that will help you a lot. For now, as long as you've learned your string names and you know the basic concepts that the notes run from A to G, every note has a sharp, apart from between B and C, big cats, and E and F, eat frogs, then that's a good start. So point number seven is, do you want to play with a plectrum a pick? or do you want to play fingerstyle? This is something which very much, I think, depends on the music that you want to play. Look at the bands that you like and the artists that you like and see how they play. If you are much more into kind of like folky, acoustic stuff, you're probably looking at more fingerstyle. If you want to play more rock, more metal, then to get that kind of speed and that accuracy, you're going to be using a lot of techniques which are specific to a pick. Have a look, type in those artists on YouTube, see what they're playing with, and then decide based on that which one that you reckon you would, you would take. If you learn one, it's always going to be helpful. You learn a bit of fingerstyle to start, and then later you are a massive Metallica fan, and you come back to using a pick, you're always going to jump back and use fingerstyle at different points. So it's not time wasted at all. But I think if we're just about to start playing at this point, might be a good idea, think about which band you like, what route you're going to go down, and let's start by using either a pick or using fingerstyle. Pick is probably a good one to start with, but again, it's what you want to do. So number eight is learning single string melodies. You've got your guitar, you've got it set up, you've got your tuner, you know your names of your strings, you know your name of your notes, so now we're ready to start. A good way to do that is, yeah, single string melodies. Before we get into anything too complex, you might learn Smoke on the Water, you might learn Tainted Love, you might learn Come As You Are, Nirvana, but all these are just very, very simple. You can play them pretty much all on the low E string. It just helps to build some of those, that muscle memory and some of those motor skills that you need to start. So it will really help you in just like learning how to hold your pick or where you want to rest your hand. If you want to just rest it on the, um, on the bridge here but it will give you a really good chance to learn how to hold the guitar how to feel comfortable with it what you're doing with this hand up here your fretting hand without giving you something that's too complex chords are going to make you pull your hair out when you first start and so maybe just doing single string melodies is a good way to start and just getting comfortable with, with what you're doing and how you're holding the guitar so that's number eight the next one is number nine to learn chords where i've said to learn single string melodies and now I'm saying to learn chords, you can find all of that on YouTube. I'm going to recommend that you learn four chords. So four chords that you want are C major, D major, G major and E minor. I'll put them up here. By doing that you can play so many songs. Knocking on Heaven's Door, Let It Be, Soul Sister by Train. The list goes on. So it's not a great list from what I've just listed, I know. Apart from Knocking on Heaven's Door, that's a banger that slaps. But yeah, you can play a surprising amount of songs with just those four chords. So you start with those, and that will really help your motor skills in terms of multiple fingers working at once. And you're gonna rip your hair out, it's gonna really hurt your fingertips. And every time you try and force your claw of a hand into one shape, it's gonna slip and your finger's gonna move and you're gonna to wanna to snap the guitar in two. Don't do that, because we've been through a lot of steps just to get to this point. Just stick with it for now, learn those four chords. G major, C major, D major, and E minor. Start with some very simple songs with them, or just practice playing those chords on their own first thought. Then maybe look up, knocking on heaven's door. Once you've got your G major, C major, D major, and E minor down, now look at filling in the gaps. So you've got your notes from A to G, so there is a major and a minor chord for every single one of those notes. You now need to fill in the gaps. You've learned your G major, C major, D major, and your E minor chords, but now you need to have a look at learning the rest of them. If you just took A major and A minor, B major and B minor, C minor, D minor, E major, 
F major and minor, and then the last one is G minor. That's all of your chords filled in, and there are loads more chords than that. It's not just major and minor, but it's a really good starting point just to get those chords down. Major and minor. Point 10. So the last point, or is it? Use an online resource. You've done your single string melodies, you have done a bit of practice with your chords, you're starting to get the hang of it now. I don't have enough points to last you for the next couple of years of your playing. So the best thing I can do is say, look online and use two resources that I've found really helpful in the past. One of them is Justin Guitar, who is an absolutely fantastic teacher. He puts the majority of his lessons, especially his beginner stuff, online for free. So if you type in Justin Guitar, I'll put a link up here or below, and use that for getting to grips with the basics. He'll go over a lot of the chord stuff that I've just explained, and he'll give you some really good songs to learn. There's so many free resources online. I started with Justin and learned a lot from him as well. So start out there as a beginner, and he will take you through. Second one is Marty Schwartz. If you're ever not sure about a certain lesson, or you're unsure about chords, or how to hold your pick, your position of your fretting hand, just go onto YouTube, type in your question, and put Marty Schwartz at the end of it. Again, put the name up here or a link. Between those two, Justin Guitar and Marty Schwartz, he should be covered. Third option is to use YouTube and just type in your questions, and there are loads of great teachers out there. So the trouble with just typing, how do I play this, how do I do that on guitar into YouTube, is you base your learning off what is known as YouTube roulette. Rather than kind of structured learning, you're a little bit all over the place. You find a video that piques your interest, you find something else that's a bit out of your skill level, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I would say when you're starting out, try and stick to Justin and Marty or similar teachers who have these courses in order. And if you feel confident, yeah, use YouTube, use Google, look for those specific questions. But just be careful that you don't make things harder for yourself and lead yourself astray by doing that. Point 11, bonus point, so there were gonna be 10. I lied. Be consistent with your practice. You want to improve. There's no point doing all this work and then you just feel like you plateau. So the best thing, and the first thing I will say is be consistent. Little and often is much better than lots and inconsistent practice. Give whatever time you can. If you've only got 10 minutes a night, 20 minutes a night, absolutely fine. If you want to progress, Quickly, 30 minutes to an hour a night would be great. If you can't do that, then every two nights. But try and keep it, like I say, consistent. You will improve a lot quicker if you're doing a little bit each night, even if that's barely any time, 10 minutes. 10 minutes a night is way better than a massive, I don't know, hour and a half session one night and then you don't play for two weeks. If you don't have much time, you can't be asked to pick up the guitar, you're lacking motivation, then tell yourself, I'm just gonna play it for five minutes. I think this comes up in Atomic Habits, the book. It, it's kind of like telling yourself, okay, it, I'm just gonna do this for five minutes, it's not long, and then if you're dreading it, which hopefully you're not, you're not gonna be thinking, oh, I'm there forever. Five minutes is all it is. And I guarantee you, you will rarely ever play for five minutes. Once you pick it up and you get started, you'll get stuck in, you'll concentrate on something, you'll start to learn something, and you would have at least played that guitar for 15, half an hour, maybe an hour. If you don't have any motivation, five minutes a day. Follow that rule and you'll play for a lot more time than that. But yeah, thank you very much for watching and remember to practice. Uh, make small steps, follow them, follow these tips and start playing guitar.